Okay, so I'm going to get rid of this. Get rid of this. I think that's where we want to be. All right. <coughs> so we're going to go back and... Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What we're going to do is figure out how this uh, electronic between us thing worked. <coughs> and it's just a really nice piece because random walks on networks are a big deal. We talked about that with, um, uh, you know, pox type things. Uh, diffusion is different. That's a different activity. Right, so diffusion is where you go to a node and you, you might have, you, then you have, um, well, random walking. But we, we, we can also have the thing where you have a flow and then it splits everywhere, right? So that can be a different kind of story. Okay, so it should all be connected. All right, uh, but the idea is we're going to go to every start, it's a between us measure, we're going to go to every uh, pair of nodes, right? There are n choose two pairs. And we're going to put a current in and take a current out of each, um, you know, assign one as start, one as target. I think that's the S and T here. And then, uh, and, then, and then solve Kirchhoff's laws to figure out where the current is flowing. Uh, and in your very, in that, um, what's the first person's name? Is it Bone and um, Magnasco? The hexagonal, we were talking about yesterday, the hexagonal uh, flow network. Yeah, yes, yeah, so I'm asking you. Well, the, the authors of that paper, it's, it's, I, I think the first person is Baum. But anyway, Marce Marcello Magnasco, right? The, um, it was an assignment question we, I gave you. There was one where we had uh, the impedance uh, along a, an edge was, um, or the, the power dissipation was proportional to I squared, right? So I squared R is the, or V times I is, is power um, along a, um, an edge, or I mean, we think of edges, but along a, uh, uh, an electrode, um, what am I saying, along a wire. Um, and so that was the one that, yeah, produced the, the braided flow, right? So we're going to see the same, that, this is the same story again. It's a braided flow thing. And it's, uh, I mean, you get braided flow for i to the power of gamma, of gamma greater than 1, but i squared matches up with what you see for random walks and electrical current stories, which is pretty cool. Right, so let's set some things up. So um, this is the, the equation we have to solve. We have um, at uh, the ith node, right, we're going to look at the ith node, and then we're going to look at all of its neighbors, right, it's got J friends, and we'll, we'll go to the neighbor and subtract, take its voltage and subtract the voltage at uh, the ith node. So we're looking in. That makes sense. Hmm. Do I have to draw that? Maybe. I don't know. All right, so here's node i. It's got all these friends. And here's j. And we, we've got uh, v. And they, then they've got friends as well. And so we've got vj here and vi here. And so Vj minus Vi, and if we divided, would, would be equal to I, um, Ji along that path um, times R, the resistance in there as well, right? So this should be equal to Rij. This is just a, there's no direction to this. This has a direction, right? And we're orienting it like that. Ah, uh, I've said the right, yeah. This is V. <coughs> Right. Voltage here, da, 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 this is the current. So this is IJ, right, yeah. Did I get that right? <coughs> so, <coughs> right. right. So the current flowing out of node I to its neighbors has to equal either zero, which is what you, right, balanced, that has to be val balanced. There can't be any current sort of created in the thing except for these two places where we're, we're feeding current in. And so there's a positive one if it's a start one because we're injecting current in and then that has to flow out from there. Um, or it could be where we're taking the current out. So this is going to be a plus. This is a Kronecker delta. So these are just integers here, right? So if i equals s, 
right? So if S is 23, this is 23 and 23, then this is a plus one. The target will be a different one, so this will be zero. So this thing here is mostly zero, and it will be one when i is equal to s, and minus one when i is equal to t. So that's a, just a useful way of writing down a, a thing. I mean, we could have like if statements and so on, right? But we can frame it perfectly mathematically. And um, of course, delta i j in general is the identity matrix. Okay. How are we doing with that? So we, we have our impedance, we're just going to say is uh, the same along all edges, and we'll just have a one, just you know, normalize, it's nothing special because we're just sort of making this story up. And, it's going, and of course, if it was a weighted network, we could you know, include that in interesting ways. But we're just going to have a one uh, for if, if there's actually an edge, and it's going to be uh, infinity, the infinite impedance if there's no edge. So we could think of it like that. And so this can be, um, if we want a one, then that works pretty well, right? We know that's true. But we could also write this like this, right? This is, this is one and one. So that's between connected nodes. So it's true for both of them, right? Between two connected nodes, AIJ is equal to one. So we could write it either way. And then unconnected ones, well, we want to have an infinite impedance. So then it sort of becomes clear, OK, we could use this. So we can use this. little term twice. And that's good. We have an adjacency matrix lying around, so we can start to use that here in, a, in normal matrix kind of operations. Right? So we might be tempted to write this down, but actually we want to write this as our impedance. Yeah. Okay? So just a little convenience for us. So we can write this. Right? We had 1 over the impedance because it's V equals I times R. Right? So V over R equals I. That's what we have. We're just going to flip that thing upside down. Um, and well, we're going to rewrite it as AIJ. Yes. OK, so that's good. So this is pretty good. This is, a, this is clearly then a uh, matrix multiplication thing here, especially you can see it here, right? The J here and the J here. That's a adjacency matrix times the voltage vector. And then we have to think just a, a little bit about this one. Right. This is an old term from English. Lots of English words that mean silly things. So, um, so we're going to do some funny things. Let's play around with this guy here. Argy bargy is another good one. That means a bit of a fight. OK, AIJ, VI minus VJ. So that's just what we had here. So as I said, you can see um, that's an adjacency matrix times the V vector. Fine, good. So let's do that. We'll have that off by itself. So it's the minus sign over here. We're, we're, we're happy with that. So we're sort of just leaving that as a written term. Now this is, if you look at this, this is the adjacency matrix. This is the, the row and column, right? So we're summing across rows, right? So this is the sum across the ith row. And it's fine, it's sitting there as a sum, but we'd like it to be a little more um, something we can make sense of. OK, so if we sum across the and we're thinking about un, you know, undirected networks. The adjacency matrix is going to be um, symmetric, right? We're just encoding, right? If, if 3 is connected to 7, and se then 7 is connected to 3. There'll be a, a 1 in 3, 7, and a 1 in 7, 3. All right. So we know that if we sum across the ith row, we're going to get 1s whenever j is connected, uh, i is connected to um, node j. So we just get its degree, number of friends. Right? And if you sum down a column, you get the number of friends of the uh, node that's associated with that column. So this is just going to be, we summed across here, it's going to be, uh, it's the i row, it's going to be k sub i. So that's what that is. OK, all right. That's, uh, that's not bad. Um, we're summing out j here, and we hit one an i. That's all right. We'd really like this to be, we like this thing here, right? This is a, a, a matrix times a vector. This is not what this is, but we can, this is where we do a little bit of sneakiness. We can just say, OK, well, we can make this into a VJ as long as we put a chronica delta there. Mm -hmm. And so this is the same sort of thing that happens when you solve, when you, when you figure out the eigenvalue equation, right? the very famous 
eigenvalue equation, you, you realize right, it's the same kind of, it's just sort of done in an algebra way here, but if we have uh, AV equals lambda V, we want this to be true. We want to, so we know this and we don't know these things. It seems like sort of a magical request or quest. Let's just make it a quest. Right, we have to, right, we've got this. This is an N by N. So we say, okay, well, this is where horrible things can happen. We'll put them all on one side. This, of course, is a zero vector. Right, we're going to put a little hat on it, a little, little hat. Um, and this, so the, it's tempting to do a very awful thing there, which you're not allowed, right? That's very bad, because this is a, these are not the same thing. That's a number. So what do we do? We, um, we want to make them all the same team. So, so we replace this one. We say, OK, that's fine. We can, we can make them look similar if we just put an identity matrix here. Right? And now we've got a minus lambda i v equals 0. <laughs> I really am thinking I love the sound of linear algebra in the morning, but that's, that's not right. Anyway, okay. And I brought it out into the open. I'm sorry. Okay, so maybe you're just thinking more rawly of apocalypse now. That's fine. Okay, so um, uh, this is, uh, yeah, right. So that's good. So now it's like VJ, VJ here, and then we've got our two matrices, right? This is a matrix. This is just the adjacency matrix. And this is also a matrix, and it's actually really, it's, it's the... Um, this is the identity matrix, just like this thing over here. And we've got the K sub i, so we're putting it on the diagonal. It's the degrees on the diagonal. So we'll call that, we'll get, give that a special name. So that's the, call it the K matrix, and it's just the degrees of the nodes along the diagonal. Chastency matrix, right? So this is the, where all your friends are. Oops. And then we're pretty good. And uh, that was, and this is, right, so this is, matrix K here, matrix A here, we're going to put them together, and then it's a, it's a blob IJ, right? It's the IJth element of that blob times VJ, so it is the ith entry of that matrix times the vector V. All right. <coughs> Sorry if that was painstaking. Is it okay? The voltage. Yeah. Yes. Which is, um, right, there's no... Uh, there's an arbitrary off offset as that. So that's a slightly important thing to think about as well. Yeah, right. You can always just add numbers to that. So electrical engineers just don't care. <laughs> no, reality doesn't. Okay, so, uh, right, so we're going to write the uh, right-hand side. So we go back here, we had a right-hand side. This is just the left-hand side. We made this blob. This right-hand side is, uh, let's, what's it got? It's got... Um, if you look at this, this is going to be delta IS, delta IT. This is going to have, this is going to be, if you think of the vector now, if, right, we go through all the I's from 1 to N. We've got this vector, it's going to be all zeros with a plus 1 in the S uh, entry and a minus 1 in the T entry. That's what that's going to look like. And we'll write it like this, right? So it's I external. So that's what we have now. So we're going to have this matrix equation, um, and this, we're trying to find this. This is going to, as I said, just be mostly zeros with a plus one and a minus one. And what we do is we just go through every, uh, we, we find every two pairs in this, uh, in, the, in the network, and we just put a plus one for the start and a minus one, and then we solve the thing, and then we go back and we do it again, right? This doesn't change. This is a general thing for the network. We're just going to put plus one and minus one in two entries, solve it, plus one, minus one, two entries, solve it, so on. <coughs> right, Laplacian, so the graph theorists will be t-shirts with this on, right, yeah. Maybe pajamas, pillow slips, tea towels, yeah. I don't know, Laurent was talking last night about, you, I know you were there, right? Did you, he talked about, his, he has a friend who wrote a book on who's a graph theorist, I think, who wrote a book, it's like a detective story, like it's a series of books where the, where the, right, where the crime fighter is a graph theorist. We should find this. By day, a graph theorist. By night, a boring, but it's not, you know, like usually it's by night, you know, 
yeah, also a graph theorist, but actually it's a crime fighter. Things like, you know, really, really cr kind of amusing, like um, how a house was laid out in the description, and it's sort of clear it couldn't be planar, you know, because, of, right, little things like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it's all, I mean, it's all there, right? Numbers was that show that, you know, you know, right? It's the Fibonacci sequence. <laughs> <laughs> you just know it was coming from a long way away. The Da Vinci Code did it, right? So wrong. It's just, it's just right there. Okay, so, um, LU decomposition, we're going to solve it, right? It's AX equals B, which some people spent a whole semester in linear algebra talking about that one equation. You're welcome. <laughs> it's the best. All right, so we're not going to compute an inverse. So, but you, you, know, you tell your little machine friend, who's not really your friend, but has been recording where you've been and stuff like that. Um, it's kind of a weird friendship with your devices. Okay, so... Um, Right, so the voltage is offset is arbitrary, so it's not a unique solution. So, but you'll, right, there's going to be a null space, which is one dimensional, it doesn't matter too much. Uh, but you, in fact, know what that one is, right? So it's, it's just any multiple of um, the one vector, right? All ones, right? This thing times all the ones, because um, a right vector, which is all ones multiplied by A, just sums across all of the rows, and of course, it's just getting the degree here. So this um, gives you zero. Anyway, that's a little extra piece. But you can solve it, so you solve it. All right, that's good. OK, so that's good. That was just a fun exercise, sorry. OK, so um, it's always good. OK, so uh, you know, part of the sort of motivation for, the, for doing this was, well, let's, let's kind of just make something else that's you know, within the realm of possibility for how a system might be working. This is a random extreme, you know, it's sort of a limiting case. Things are just randomly wandering around on the network. And it was to be compared with the shortest path approach where everyone knows exactly where they want to go. And they're also doing that, you know, kind of all at the same time, which is a bit strange as well. Okay, right, I mean, if you think of transportation, like people actually moving around and traveling, then you're gonna have loads on streets and you're gonna have loads on in power grids that depend on where everyone is and so on. But anyway, this is, these are these abstract things. So I guess I want you always to think about that when you have someone present you with betweenness and say this is why terrorism is the way it is. You know, whatever it is, people do this, right? It's crazy. Uh, anyway, so we're going to have this, this, this game. And as I said, we've figured out a way to solve it. Uh, this is the random walk version. Um, and it's basically equivalent to electronic betweenness, right? So this is, I'm just really saying, I'm just really, I don't need to have all these words here, I suppose, but I'm just saying it's the same, same plane. 